for at least 4,600 million years. And with this repetition of the water cycle around the Earth, the waters in seas and oceans became saline, while the fresh water remained on land. And actually, this salinity is a great mercy from Allah, or glory be to Him, because billions of animals and plants die in seas and oceans. And of course, without this salinity, their fermentation could have been absolutely dangerous to life on the surface of our planet. One of the greatest qualities of water described in the Quran is that this wonderful fluid is capable of meeting without completely mixing. And this is mainly to provide very many environments for life, even in the same area, the same fresh water or the same sea or at the deltas. And that's why the Quran reads in Surah Al-Furqan, chapter number 25, verse number 53, وَهُوَ الَّذِي مَرَجَ الْبَحْرَيْنِ هَذَا عَذْبٌ فُرَاتٌ وَهَذَا مِلْحٌ أُجَالٌ وَجَعَلَ بَيْنَهُمَا بَرْزَخًا وَحِجْرًا مَحْجُورًا And he, meaning Allah, all glory be to him, is the one who has merged the two seas. And here it means rivers and seas. The two seas mean river and sea. One is potable, sweet. This is the river. And the other is highly saline and bitter. This is the sea. Yet he, Allah, or glory be to him, has made a barrier between them and restricted each of these environments as a special confinement. This marine knowledge, or what we call marine geology or oceanography came to human knowledge only in the probably end of the 19th century, the beginning of the 20th century, that rivers can flow into the sea. And because of the fact that uh, fresh water is less dense than saline water, the fresh water floats on top of the saline water for several hundreds of kilometers, if not thousands of kilometers, depending on the difference in density. And this is amazing because as a result of this flow of fresh water into seas and oceans, a brackish rim is formed to the fresh water. A brackish means water with low salinity. This brackish water again becomes a separating body between the fresh water and the marine water. Not only this, but every delta on land has got a buried delta in front of it under the water. And the sediments that constitute the delta with its two V-shaped sides and front play another role in separating the fresh water from the brackish water and from the marine water. And as a result, we get three distinctive environments. Freshwater environment containing forms of life that can only survive in that medium. And we have brackish water around it, which also accommodates certain forms of life that cannot leave that area. And marine water that has got its own specific forms of life that cannot live in either fresh water or brackish water. By this process, Allah, or glory be to him, has multiplied the media, the environment, to accommodate as many forms of life as possible. And Allah, through his eternal knowledge, has made water with this specific quality, that water can meet without merging completely into each other. And that's why the verse reads, Allah, or glory be to him, is the one who has merged the two seas, rivers and seas. One is potable, sweet, and the other is highly saline, bitter. And yet he, Allah, or glory be to him, has made a barrier between them and restricted each of these environments 
as a special confinement. Any group of life forms that exist in fresh water cannot migrate to brackish water. And any group of brackish water cannot migrate to the marine water or vice versa. And by this process, Allah, or glory be to him, has multiplied the environments in the same place. And not only the separation is due to the physical difference in density, but it also made by the ions, the ionized atoms that are in fresh water and in marine water. Each of these environments has its own physical characteristics, has its own life forms, has its own sediments that come down from it, and have a boundary of electricity, of a boundary of electrically charged particles of similar nature that actually do not allow this mixing to go through. And that's why the verse says, وَجَعْلَ بَيْنَهُمَا بَرْزَخًا وَحِجْرًا مَحْجُورًا And he, Allah, or glory be to him, has made a barrier between them and restricted each of these environments as a special confinement. We read the same in Surah Fatir, verse number 12, chapter number 35 in the glorious Quran. And the verse reads, بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وما يستوي البحران هذا عذب فرات سائغ شرابه وهذا ملح أجاج ومن كل تأكلون لحما طرية وتستخرجون حلية تلبسونها وترى الفلك فيه مواخرة لتبتغوا من فضله ولعلكم تشكرون And the two seas meaning rivers and seas are not the same they are not equal the one is potable sweet and pleasant to drink and the other is saline and bitter yet from each of these two seas you eat tender flesh and extract ornaments to wear and you see the ships plowing through it so that you may seek from his meaning Allah's bounty and that happily you may be thankful to your creator And in this verse, again, we find many scientific facts. The first of these is that the two seas, the fresh and the saline, cannot be equal. The second fact is that from each, Allah has created tender flesh, this beautiful white flesh of marine animals that is made allowable to Muslims. And really, it's amazing that Allah has given these creatures, whatever minute they may be, the capacity to extract from the small percentage of salinity in oceanic waters and even far lesser percentage of salinity in fresh water to make from this beautiful white flesh which we enjoy eating. And I think we came to a short break and I have to stop here And when we meet after the short break, we'll continue this discussion. And until then, I thank you for listening and greet you in our Islamic way. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. May Allah's peace, mercy, and blessings be with you all. Revealed the glorious Quran as a guide, light, 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 and cure. But have we understood this great book as Allah wants us to do? What are the techniques to contemplate on the Quran? How do you memorize the Quran and keep it in your heart? What are the right ways to benefit from the healing power of the Quran? I am a Muslim. I, Ahmed ibn Saifuddin.
We'll answer these questions and more in my series, The Etiquettes of Dealing with the Glorious Quran, here on Peace TV. Perceive the parameters which make the understanding of the Quran crystal clear in The Etiquettes of Dealing with the Glorious Quran every Monday at 7 p.m. and repeat telecast at 12 p.m. India on Peace TV. Marriage or divorce? What's Islamic ruling? Nikah. Solution or problem? Heaven or hell? Uh, there is a misconception. You choose. Beauty. Wealth. Family status, virtue. Decide what you want. Decide your choice. Be sad or be happy. It's your choice. Join Dr. Zakir Naik in Better Half or Bitter Half every Friday at 6.30 p.m. and repeat telecast at 9.30 a.m. India on Peace TV. Welcome back, my dear viewers. After this short episode, we were discussing verse number 12, Al Surah Fatir, chapter number 35. And the verse reads, بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وما يستوي البحران هذا عذب فرات سائغ شرابه وهذا ملح أجاج ومن كل تأكلون لحما طرية وتستخرجون حلية تلبسونها وترى الفلك فيه مواخرة لتبتغوا من فضله ولعلكم تشكرون and the two seas meaning rivers and seas are not the same they are not equal the one is potable sweet and pleasant to drink and the other is saline and bitter yet from each of these two seas you eat tender flesh and extract ornaments to wear and you see the ships plowing through it so that you may seek from his meaning Allah's bounty and that happily you may be thankful to your creator and in this verse, again, we find many scientific facts. The first of these is that the two seas, the fresh and the saline, cannot be equal. The second fact is that from each, Allah has created tender flesh, this beautiful white flesh of marine animals that is made allowable to Muslims. And really, it's amazing that Allah has given these creatures, whatever minute they may be, the capacity to extract from the small percentage of salinity in oceanic waters and even far lesser percentage of salinity in fresh water to make from this beautiful white flesh which we enjoy eating. And we said that one of the great miracles of Allah great creations of Allah is that from both media Allah has created abundant forms of marine life with beautiful white flesh that is edible to man and this is really amazing with the minute percentage of salinity in fresh water we can find this beautiful white flesh and with the slightly more percentage of salinity in oceanic water, we can get actually this white flesh. And it's really an amazing fact that out of this very small quantity of soluble material in water, these animals can build that beautiful white flesh, which we enjoy eating by the will of the Creator. And the verse says, and you extract ornaments to wear extract ornaments, some of these marine animals actually can form beautiful rock like coral reefs or beautiful precious material like pearls. And all this is made by these animals that live 
in such environments. And both coral reefs, oyster pearls, actually live in marine water. But recently, oyster pearls have been adapted to live in fresh water as well. But in fresh water, we can get very many shells of animals that can be used, again, for making ornaments. And finally, the verse speaks about the surface tension of water. And you see the ships plowing through it, another bounty of Allah, the surface tension which Allah has given to water to allow very heavy ships to plow through this water without drowning. So that you may seek from Allah's bounty. Of course, without this character, man could not traverse the immense vastness of the seas and oceans in trade or in transportation or even in enjoyment. And that happily you may be thankful to Allah. These are among the great bounds of Allah on us. So we have to ponder about them, to think about them, and be grateful to Allah that has given them to us. And these two verses speak actually about the interaction between fresh water and marine water. And up until the beginning of the 20th century, nobody believed that this could also happen within the same sea, within marine water and marine water, within saline water and saline water. Only lately after space travel and shuttle travel, photographing the water in the same sea or the same ocean, adjacent quantities of water would give different colors. And when scientists came down to study this phenomenon, they found that any slight variation in the degree of salinity or temperature or density would actually allow marine water to separate. This separation is not only on the surface horizontally, but also vertically. We notice that the sun evaporates water from the surface of seas and oceans, and as a result, the surface water become more saline and more dense. And immediately it falls down, and lesser dense water comes on top. And by this process, the water section in the same ocean, in the same sea, became stratified. If we take a column of water at the tropics, if we take a column of water at the equator, we will find all qualities of the climatic conditions on the surface of the earth. We will find tropical water followed by equatorial water, followed by cold zone water, followed by even polar water. So really this classification of water, both vertically and horizontally in the same sea, is again one of the great gifts of Allah, all glory be to him, to multiply the environments in the same place so that every form of life can find its suitable environment to live in. This fact was only discovered on studying the connection between closed or semi-closed seas with open ocean, like the Red Sea communicating with the Indian Sea via Bab al-Mandab and Bahr al-Arab. The Red Sea is a closed sea or a semi-closed sea. Evaporation in it is excessively high, and that's why its water is more saline than the oceanic water. As the Red Sea water would move into the Indian Ocean, it actually goes below this water for several hundreds of kilometers without mixing with it. And from this observation, science came to realize that one of the most fascinating qualities of water is that this fluid, which has very strong solubility powers, can meet without complete mixing. And of course, by this, Allah has multiplied the environments in the same sea, in the same ocean, in the meeting of rivers and seas. We read in Surah Al-Rahman, chapter number 55, verses number 19 to 23. 
a beautiful expression of this fact which reads maraj al bahraini yaltaqiyan baynahuma barzakh la yabghiyan fa bi ayi ala'i rabbikuma tukadhiban yakhruj minhuma al ulu'u wal marjan fa bi ayi ala'i rabbikuma tukadhiban he allah or glory be to him has merged the two seas to me between them is a barrier neither can transgress then which is it of the great bounds of your lord you both humans and jinn can deny out of each of them come pearls and coral stones then which is it of the great bounds of your lord you both humans and jinn can deny and here we can see an emphasis that this intersection and this interaction between the two waters is not the fresh and the marine it's not the fresh and the saline it's between saline and saline and this fact was only disclosed to man towards the end of the 20th century and for the quran to spell it out that beautifully 14 centuries ago that is enough testimony to every sane person that this book cannot be the work of man it is the divine word in its divine purity and until we meet in a coming episode i thank you for listening and greet you in our islamic way assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh may allah's peace mercy and blessings be with you all